Now to the latest from Maui. Yesterday marked one month since the fires changed the Valley Isle community forever. Much of the devastation is centered around Lahaina when the where the uh, cleanup of toxic material continues. We're told it may be a year until all that debris can be cleared. The death toll remains at 115 lives lost. Work continues to find those who are still missing. The official list has 66 people unaccounted for, down from 385 just last week. But we are told there are 80 more names not on that list yet because they haven't been fully vetted. More money is on the way for businesses impacted by the fires. The state and county will start giving out grants from $10,000 to $20,000. The Maui Economic Opportunity will help distribute the money. Yesterday, Governor Josh Green laid out a plan to reopen portions of West Maui for visitors on October 8th. Ben Gutierrez has more on that effort to revive tourism on the Valley Isle. Knowing that all of Maui is open, except for the Lahaina area, which is still under recovery, it gives them assurance that they can continue to have an ex a good experience if they come to visit Maui. Most of West Maui, including the resorts and hotels in Ka'anapali, Napili, and Kapalua north of Lahaina, have been unofficially off limits to outsiders since the wildfire a month ago. It's unclear how much lodging will be available in a month, since much of it is currently housing evacuees. The American Red Cross has 6,595 residents in our um, emergency shelter hotels right now. Um, that's as of yesterday. The Red Cross has been using 29 hotel locations across the Valley Isle, like the Royal Lahaina Resort in Ka'anapali, to house those displaced by the fires. Many evacuees have also been temporarily housed in West Maui condos. In Honokawai, there's a large stretch of condos there that are really vacation rentals that we put a lot of people in. Now we have local residents living there. What's this mix going to look like? The governor is optimistic. We will concentrate our um, individuals that stay in hotels into just two or three hotels and all the other hotels will be able to function as normal. So every disaster is different, unfortunately. So we aren't able to provide that information on a timeline. And Lahaina itself is no longer part of the visitor experience. The big draw for West Maui was Lahaina. That was the place where there were shops, there were restaurants, there was nightlife, there was galleries, and there was lots for people to do there. Travel agent Bruce Fisher is taking a wait-and-see attitude about West Maui, but he does have another spot in mind for visitors, one that the Hawaii Tourism Authority says also needs economic help. I'm advising people to go to South Maui. I love South Maui anyway. It's closer to everything that people want to do. If you want to go to Haleakala, you want to go... To that was Ben Gutierrez reporting. Meanwhile, the governor also announced a plan to get fire victims paid for their losses without going to court. He's proposing a special Lahaina fund with potentially billions of dollars contributed by entities who might be liable, such as HECO, the county and the state. Victims could be awarded millions of dollars while avoiding a legal battle and legal fees. The governor criticized lawyers who've come into town seeking plaintiffs for lawsuits. He says the state attorney general is already taking action. She's filing. Uh... And we're reminded every day. I don't even recognize. He's filing uh, legal complaints against uh, people who were not licensed. Uh, to practice in Hawaii. Uh, those are the worst vultures and they need to fly back to the mainland. We apologize for the glitch there. The attorneys involved in already filed lawsuits tell us the court system is the best way to ensure justice will be carried out. The state is budgeting up to $100 million in temporary assistance for needy families. Under an agreement with the Red Cross, displaced residents will be housed at hotels or B&Bs for at least 36 weeks, while the state and various agencies work to secure more housing options through 2025. We spoke with fire survivors who are still trying to process all that they've lost and how to move forward. And we're reminded every day I don't even recognize the streets because all, all, I, all I know are homes there, you know? So it's, 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 it's very, very sad. It's been horrible. We've had just so many things to overcome um, with FEMA, not being able to want to pay us, um, trying to find a house to live in, unemployment denying our claims, just all the little hurdles that we've had to go through to be able to survive and live. And we don't even know how long we're going to be able to live at the hotel anymore. 
Meanwhile, the Family Assistance Center at the Hyatt Ka'anapali, it is relocating to the Lahaina Civic Center Gymnasium. That starts today. The hours are 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. To make an appointment, call 808-270-7771. And time is running out for fire survivors to apply for non-group shelter housing. The cutoff to enroll for hotels and lodging at other properties through the American Red Cross is this coming Friday at 5 p.m. That number to call is 1-800-RED-CROSS.